There are two new functions coming soon to Excel, group by and pivot by. These will change the way you write formulas in Excel. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced user, this video is for you so you can be ready when these functions appear in your Excel. Here I have a list of business expenses and I want to find out how much each office is claiming for their expenses per expense type. Now before I go into the group by function, I'm going to convert this into a table for best results. A quick way to do this is to use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control T, or how I remember it is T for Tony. It's automatically picked up my range, which is great. So I'm going to click OK. It's pulled in this blue and white color. I want to go back to my rather dull black and white. So to do that, I go here. I just click on this one and there we go. So the group by function, just simply type in equals and group by tab to select it. So there's lots of different arguments to choose from. The first three are mandatory, whereas the ones in brackets are optional. So the first one, uh, row fields, so I'm going to select uh, the office and click again to get the whole column, including the heading. And then I also want to include expense type. So I'm just going to drag across here do a comma to go on to the next argument, which is values. So which values do I want to include in this group by table? So I want to include the expense cost. So I click here, click again uh, to select the whole column, then a comma. So what function do I want to include? So this is what I'm going to calculate the cost by. Uh, so there's lots of different functions here to choose from. So I want, I want the sum of expense costs. So I'm just going to double click here uh, to pull it in. The other arguments are optional. Uh, I will cover these in a moment, but for now I'm just going to close the brackets and press enter and it pulls in the results. Now there's two things you will notice straight away with this table is first off, there's no headings. Even though I selected the headings, it hasn't brought those through. So let's fix that now. So one way is you could just manually type it in, which will probably be quicker, uh, but that's one way you can do it. Uh, another way is to click here and then go back into your function. And the next argument is field headers. So to get to that one, I'll do another comma, goes into field headers. These are my options. So I want to say, yes, my data does have headers and I want to show them. So I'm going to double click, press enter and it pulls those through. Now, for some reason, it never brings through the header for, for the values. So you would need to manually type those in. Um, you can also make this bold as well, uh, just to stand out. But that's how you can bring it in. So that's one way to do it. Uh, the other way is just to manually type it in uh, yourself. Now, the other thing you'll notice is the formatting of the values. So it hasn't brought through the currency, but that's easy enough to fix. You can just go here. Uh, I'm just going to click on the counting and that will bring those through. Now you probably could have created this table quite easily using a pivot table, but one of the advantages of using the group by function is that it's dynamic. For example, over here, I'm going to change uh, this office to another name. Let's call it Ascot. Press enter. And that's updated this group by table automatically. So now we've got Ascot across the top which you don't get with a pivot table. With a pivot table, you would have to click refresh uh, to update the data. So let's look at the other arguments that we've got in our function. So let's go back in. We're going to ignore the headers field. So let's just add a comma and then just put in another comma to move over to total depth. So this is uh, this allows you to add extra totals. So at the moment, we've already got a grand total there at the bottom. But if you want to include subtotals, then you can do that too. So we've got grand and subtotals. If I double click, press enter. Now I've got these subtotals. Another thing you can do with this group by function is sorting. So you can sort the data within this data set. So to do this, we we'll go back into the function. I'm going to put in a comma to go on to the next optional field, sort order. So I want to sort it by expense cost. So this is the third column within this data set. So I'm going to press in number three, press enter, and it will now sort it 
by expense cost. Now, if you look at this list here, so for Slough, it starts off with 60, and the next number is just less than two and a half grand. Let's go to another one, say Birmingham. So it starts off with 46, and then it goes up to just less than two grand. Um, so this is doing the smallest number first and going up to the largest. If you wanted to do it the other way around, all you do is just go back into here, or even there, and then click here and do a minus three, and it does the reverse order. So it's doing it now largest to smallest. So the last optional argument that we have available is filter array. So this allows us to filter our data. So for example, I want to exclude Gotham from this list. So I don't want to include Gotham on this, on this data list. So what I do is I select the office location from here. And I'm going to put in the not equals and then to spell out Gotham with the speech marks, press enter, and Gotham is now removed from this list. We're now gonna have a look at how you can work with dates in the group by function, in particular, working with year and month. So let's start by typing in group by. My row fields, this time it's just gonna be purchase date, put in a comma, and my values will be expense cost. In the sum, close the brackets. Now I'm not going to press enter yet because I want to group it this time by the year. So I don't want a, a big long list of dates, I want to group it by the year. So there's a function called year. So I open the brackets and just before that first comma, I'm just going to close the brackets and now press enter. It's now grouping it by the year. To give you a variation of this, if you want to also include the month, uh, I'm going to go over here now. I'm going to change this to text. Still got my bracket open from before, so I'm going to keep that one there. And then before this bracket, I'm going to put in a comma. And now I just type in the formatting that I want for the date. So this time it's going to be the year in full, and then the month. So I want the month as a number. Close the speech marks. And now press enter and it's now giving me a list of dates uh, grouped uh, by year and month as before it hasn't pulled through the, the currency formatting but that's easy enough to change and we can add in our headings to add a new column to this data set we have to do something slightly different to avoid those errors so what we do we just click into our function and we're going to use a function called hstack uh, I did do a YouTube Shorts on this, uh, which I put a, a link uh, somewhere so you can check that one out, a very short video. But simply just hstack, open the brackets, and then we go over here after this bracket, and we're gonna put in a comma, and then select the column that we want to include. So I want to include the office. And we just close off the brackets, press enter, and it now pulls in the office location. So what this report has shown me, or what this data set has shown me, is that in 2021, in January, Gotham spent 550 pounds on expenses. And then it goes down, we've got Manchester, Birmingham, and then Gotham again, but this is 2021 in February, and then on the list goes. Once you understand the group by function, pivot by is really easy. It's all about knowing when to use it. So for example, here I have a data set of where I've used the group by function, and I've got the list of the years, and I've got the employees and the total expenses for that year. And as you can see, it's quite a long list. With the pivot by function, I can get the information to go across and it'd be grouped a lot more cleanly. Let me show you. So I start by typing in equals and then pivot by. It's got the same fields that we saw in the group by function, but there are some extra ones. So the first one is row fields. So I want the employee name put a comma, we've got the column fields, so I'm gonna select the purchase date, put in a comma, the values will be expense cost, and then our function is sum. Now before I press enter, I want to format the purchase date to be year only. So to do this, I just click here, type in year, open the brackets, close the brackets here, 
and press enter. So instead of getting a long list of data like we had before, it's grouped up nicely into years. So it's going across rather than down. Let me know in the comments what you think of these new Excel functions. Are these something you will start using?